Hello, hello. Just checking my sound. Um, seems like everything is working. Um, let's check the volume. I think that might be good. Um, right. <laughs> I didn't forget to turn the microphone on this time, which is great. Uh, I do think I need to put it slightly back, otherwise it's going to be in the way. Chris, hello, how you doing? Hi, Capriella. I'm just gonna post the link in the Facebook group. Um, <laughs> I was just thinking, how do we get the link again? YouTube. Copy link. Do -do. How's everyone doing? Um, right. <laughs> Grab the link. Oh, that's the wrong link. <clears throat> there we are. Okay. Yes, thankfully, my neighbor has stopped um, mowing the lawn or trimming the edges of the lawn or whatever. It was very loud. Um, hi, Serena. <laughs> Why are you so happy? <laughs> uh, I'm already glad for you. Um, wait, I'm not hearing any music. I need to... Turn on the music. Mm, how do I do this? Playlist. Open media. No, there we go. So I'm always, I'm listening to the same music as, as you are hearing, but I'm listening to it in a different order. So <laughs> it's probably not the same, same song. Um, 
Hi, Natasha. Uh, <gasps> David Tennant is coming to Comic Con in that. Oh. oh, you're gonna take a photo with him? Oh. That's that's goals. Yeah. <laughs> oh, when is Dutch Comic Con? Oh, in June. Hmm. Wait. We should be one here too. Oh, Edinburgh. In October. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's so fun though. I'm so happy for you. <laughs> this month? Oh, I thought it was June. Maybe there's more. Okay. Okay, nice. That's nice. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm still watching season three of Doctor Who. I think it's season three. It's just uh, we've just started uh, David Tennant. No, no, that's not true. He was from season two, right? Yeah. 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 So uh, we we've not watched in a while because. Um, <laughs> because we started another hobby which I'm going to I'm going to share very soon um, yeah oh there were summer edition and a winter edition okay okay my inner Whovian is freaking out <laughs> yeah I totally get it <laughs> I mean David Tennant is an all round just fantastic human being so so yeah, that's amazing. Um, right. <laughs> so anyone else got some news to share? Uh, might not be as exciting as this. Um, what are you working on? Uh, what have you been working on in, in the last week or um, since you last joined? Um, I've been dying to cast on some socks. I, I need a just quick, easy project. And it's not as much about it being a quick project, it's about it being a small project. Um, because a lot of my projects lately have been blankets um, or other big projects such as this one. I'm knitting a bath mat. It's attached to a lot of yarns. But I'm <laughs> I'm knitting a bath mat. It's not looking like much right now. <laughs> but it is it is just yeah, it's very nice. Um this is with a very chunky yarn, held double. So it's very quick. It's very quick. I did this in two evenings. Um, and, you know, compared to the other stuff that I've been doing, this one is just so chunky and so fast. And I normally don't uh, knit with very chunky yarns because, I don't know, uh, it's not the best for garments. Uh, I don't like chunky garments, um, but for home decoration stuff, it's perfect. So, um, yeah, <laughs> it looks very frumpy right now. So, uh, but I'll, I'll be just blocking it and, uh, I think it'll be fine. Hi, Ariadne. Uh, Natasha said, wait, did you choose another design for it? Yes, I did. Um, I uploaded a kind of like designer point of view video um, to um, to the L-Star Patreon tier because uh, I was just getting stuck on this project and I needed to figure out why. And in that video, I'm just like going through, okay, what do you do if a design doesn't work? And I decided to go with a simpler design because I was stressing myself out. Um, 
yeah, so sometimes you just have to do a simpler pattern just uh, to make things enjoyable to knit. <laughs> it is a very chunky knit, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Anique says, I'm working on my olive cardigan v-neck. Oh, yes. Uh, and stranded at round two of the sock madness. Oh, do you mean, you mean you're not continuing the sock madness? I, I don't know how this works. Um, did you get beaten? <laughs> um, you really have to participate sometime. Uh, hi, knitting with Zuni. Hello. Uh, Chris is saying I joined the Sokkegekte cow. Okay, so, so oh, is it also sock madness? Sokkegekte sock madness. Maybe, maybe it's to make the second sock of four pairs. Four pairs, not at the same time, right? Wow. Uh, how are you? Thank you. I'm I'm doing very well. How are you? Um, you were beaten. Oh no. <laughs> Well, I suppose I suppose it is a kind of competition. Um, Sokkegekte is from Miriam Molbeek. Oh, okay. Uh, it does sound interesting. Sokkegekte. Uh, okay. Has it just started? No. Wait clicked on something and then it said this page doesn't exist so call um okay it's from 10th of april to 22nd of may but which pattern Okay. Okay, it's too much to read right now. <laughs> but it sounds very interesting, very nice. Um, oh, an Instagram. Okay, okay. Uh, hi, Jazz. Jazz says I'm finishing. Uh, oh, Moreland. Oh, I've heard of that. Attic 24 has beautiful designs. Oh yeah, it's really nice. Um, so it's a kind of, it's a crochet blanket and kind of wavy looking stripes. Really, really beautiful. Are you using one of their color packs or have you assembled your own palette for this? Really nice. Um, Everyone can choose their pattern. Oh, for the for the Dutch sock madness, yeah. Oh, Gabriella is also joining in the soccer hip to cow. Oh, nice. Uh, hi, Yvonne. How are you? So, I was in town. When was this? Saturday. On Saturday, and um, I was looking for. I don't know, some cheap craft materials. I was looking for like uh, uh, tiny brushes or, you know, some kind of like painting, uh, painting materials. Um, so we went into some couple, uh, a couple stores and we also went into this uh, magazine shop called WH Smith's. Um, it's just your standard greeting card, magazine, newspaper, um, shop and they sometimes have craft materials so i thought okay let's just check in there and you know i'm in a magazine shop i'm always checking the craft magazines and then <laughs> i found the latest issue of pom pom i was so happy because this has been sold out in my regular uh, yarn stores it has been sold out on their website just as soon as they announced that, that they were not going to be continuing with Pom Pom Quarterly, everyone just ran and bought everything, which 
you know, I always think it's kind of sad that when a shop announces that they're closing, that everyone suddenly wants to buy their stuff. Yeah, it's, it's a, it's a bit, yeah, bittersweet, I guess. Um, they've not gone bankrupt or anything. They're still continuing with other things, but, um, yeah, I could not get this issue online, um, could not find it in the yarn stores that I usually go to, but then this random magazine store suddenly had it. And, um, yeah, it's beautiful. Um, so they always have a theme and this one, uh, has a woven theme. So it's called Checkmate, an ode to wovens and on the back, there is some woven knitting there as well. Um, they also always have a recipe and this one is kind of woven as well or braided. <laughs> I thought that was really fun. Um, and there is a pair of socks in here that I really want to try. Um, trying to find a picture without showing you a pattern. Um, that one is really beautiful. And there's a sweater vest. Oh yeah, but this set is just so fun. <laughs> this is the cover set. And I've seen someone making this in, in like a rainbow color. It's on the Instagram page of Pom Pom. Uh, they're, they're called Pom Pom Mag on uh, Instagram and they posted a rainbow a version, which was stunning. Yeah, exactly, Yvonne. Why don't buy when they are around? Exactly. It's like, um, sometimes, you know, if you're a creator, it's always a balance of, of trying to, you know, there's on one side, you have to fake it until you make it right. Um, fake being super successful and successfulness will come your way. That's, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of the psychological thing. Um, cause I don't know. I don't know why. <laughs> On one side, there's fake it until you make it. On the other side, it's, you know, being really open about your struggles so that people know, okay, they actually need my help right now. Um, but, you know, there's, there's always a balance because you don't want people to buy your stuff simply because they feel sorry for you. Um, right? But, so there's always a balance. Uh, I do think people generally want to know when a brand is struggling because, you know, if you really like that brand, you want them to continue, you know, being. <laughs> um, and I think, you know, a lot of magazines have had it really uh, rough because uh, paper prices are, have, have shot up. Um, I heard about that through my publisher as well. Um, yeah, but, um, and their magazine is all already like, it's, it's not cheap. This one is 17 pounds 50. Uh, it's, it's almost a book price, you know? Um, but book quality is really, really good. Um, this is, one of the other patterns. Oh, it's so shiny. Really love this one. Tuskaft. Don't know how to pronounce that. Looks beautiful. Um, it is three color color work though. So yeah. You don't miss the cow until the stall is empty. Oh, that is such a cute saying. I mean, sad, but it's such a cute saying, actually. Oh. Um, and the pair of... Oh, this is also really nice. 
Okay, I'll just show you this this photo. I think it's knit. No, no wait, it's crochet. Oh, from Jessica. I mean, yes a bit, Bueno. Beautiful. It's called Convergence. And then we have the socks. And they have a bit of a woven effect. So it looks checkered. And then here you can see a bit of the woven texture, which I'm really intrigued by. Yeah. Um, and this is called Ordito. Ordito. Um, yeah. So yeah, beautiful patterns. Um, I don't often buy a lot of pattern magazines because a lot of what I make I want to I want to make up my own design but I do um, I do learn a lot from patterns that are by other designers um, so yeah and yeah I was just I don't know I kind of wanted to have the last issue as well uh, I have a couple of their magazines and they're always just amazing uh, I love the matte paper yeah um, Ariadne says sometimes I buy knitting magazines because they're so pretty and every once in a while I read through it and admire the designs and pictures yeah it's it's a, um, it's more of a like inspiration thing for me I think and it's just nice to read through um, and the photography is often so pretty um, so I'll set up my other camera. Let's hope, <laughs> let's hope it doesn't need an update again. Please work. <laughs> it worked last time. Okay. Let's see. Droid cam. Using a different USB port, maybe. Oh, come on. Yeah, I think I know. Hmm. I think I know what's wrong. I think the cable's broken. Oh, 
Let me try another cable. Nope. Um, right. Okay, I know how to fix it, but um, um, this is going to be I'm gonna be offline for just a few seconds, so it'll be pause and then I'll come back. Um, hi, good morning, Mo. Welcome. Uh, Jazz asked, do you have tips uh, for who's starting to stream live on YouTube? I'll give you some tips after I come back and fix this problem. Um, so, okay, I'll be gone for, a few seconds, maybe, maybe up to a minute. I'll be back. Right, I should be back. Um, oh, yeah, activate. There we go. Yeah. So there's two ways in which this camera can connect. And that's either, I'll just show you the, the magazine. <laughs> uh, there's two ways in which uh, the camera can connect. And that's either via a cable, but, um, you know, a cable can work for recharging your phone and then suddenly there's this really fragile thing in the cable uh, and it can break and then it doesn't connect to the software anymore uh, so so that's the first option of connecting this camera the second option is via Wi-Fi oh it wasn't gone Okay, well maybe, 
I mean, it did say I, I disconnected and I just, I was quiet and I didn't move. <laughs> so maybe it, it didn't look like I was gone. Um, in, right. What was I going to say? All right. Yeah. Uh, so it needs to be on the same Wi-Fi. So I needed to quickly change my Wi-Fi. Um, um, yeah, but I would say first tip if you want to start streaming is to get OBS Studio. So that's O B S uh, OBS Studio. Um, that makes it really, really uh, easy to stream and you can have these different layouts. So that would be my first tip. Um, so <laughs> before, before I start knitting, I want to show you my, <laughs> my new hobby. And it all started with the, um, with a bir birthday gift for uh, my partner, Tim, a couple of weeks ago. Um, one of the things that he always loved to do was um, painting miniatures for Lord of the Rings battle games or something. Um, and so we, and he had not been doing this for 15 years. Um, so we decided to, to give him, um, a voucher so he could start again, but I had not thought that I would be starting this hobby with him. <laughs> so, you know, those, those little miniatures, those little like warriors, uh, that you then, then paint, you know, I love to paint. Um, and we do, we do paint by numbers all the time, um, which I know completely different but so I got into it and I thought okay I'll, I'll try this one miniature and now I've ordered seven more miniatures anyway <laughs> so so here's my <laughs> here's one of the miniatures it's my very first <laughs> and I just feel like when we sit down at the table together we just feel like the ultimate nerds but it's it's so much fun uh let's see if i can if adding a background makes it better i don't know uh so yes yeah, this little spooky guy and i painted this ombre cape <laughs> and yeah i surprisingly i really like it so yeah, I'm gonna paint more of these. I painted some rust on the little, um, what's it called? His weapon, but yeah. <laughs> so I figured I'd show you. It's super tiny. This is really like next level painting. It feels like there's so much at stake here. Um, <laughs> uh, things can go wrong very easily. Um, so yeah, but it, it's just, uh, it's nice to have a hobby together. So, so yeah, I'm really enjoying it. Uh, <laughs> I might show you more, but, um, yeah, first let's get back to knitting. Hi, Alice. Who got it? It's helemaal niet erg that you can English come. Hier gaat het heel goed. Leuk dat je even komt kijken. <laughs> Alright, so I'm knitting the border on my blanket. And it's a very long process. Oops, knocking my ghost over. So I'm very happy that you are here to keep me company during this. Oh, 
How did I do this again? And I don't know, I always feel like every couple of months, I just need a different hobby to keep me entertained. So it might be mosaics, it might be woodworking, it might be clay, painting. And I was wondering what other hobbies have you all tried in the past, I don't know, year or so? Do you find yourself trying out new hobbies and then you keep coming back to knitting or crochet or do you just try out everything and see what you like best? Natasha says, I've tried out bead weaving. Oh, yes! I have your totes too, right here. Ta da! Oh. <laughs> it does seem really fun, bead weaving. Um, I like that, but mostly stick to knitting and spinning. I used to do some bead weaving as well uh, when I was very young um, and I mostly I always did this with my aunt so she would like show me what to do and we made like beetles and spiders and I even made a cow <laughs> uh, and sometimes we would make flowers but yeah mostly mostly tiny insects yeah and dragonflies um, but it was really fun. Oh, bye, Capriella. Have a nice day. Yes, I think I'll be here on Thursday. So I'll see you then. <laughs> yeah, the dragonflies were really fun. Um, we worked with glass beads and, you know, they're so shiny and then the dragonfly wings are often like super shiny and have lots of color. So that was really nice, but it was really fiddly because the, the points where the wings attach to the body, it was really thin. Um, so it was very fiddly, but still. A lot of fun. Yeah, so now, <laughs> um, so now I'm looking at all my craft supplies with new eyes, just because you know I see I see cardboard 
and then I think okay maybe I could craft like uh, uh, a gravestone or something out of cardboard for this or I don't know do things with air dry clay for the base uh, or yeah um, and, you know there's people mixing their mud and sand and you know there are tons of things that you can buy in store and I think it's just bit unnecessary to buy sand in a store but yeah and also these these miniatures their paint ranges are like 200 colors but I just had this color mixing class and now I think yeah well probably get away with just using five colors and then mixing everything from there yeah uh Kes says i made a lot of lace oh cross guns um bobbin lace yeah that's that's i i tried that once at a at a craft event and it was really really fun um, went to school for six years to learn different patterns. <gasps> that just sounds amazing. You can get such intricate lace uh, with bobbin lace. Mel says, I usually spend a few years or more on a hobby before trying something new. Uh, but I started Tunisian, oh, Tunisian crochet this year. I've done scrapbooking, costume sewing. <gasps> Knitting, crochet, bath, bath bombs, candles. Oh, bath bombs are so fun. Um, I tried that just once and then... I mean, I, I already then made enough for almost my whole family. <laughs> so I figured I'd better use them before making more. But it was really fun. Costume sewing sounds really, really nice as well Yeah, and Tunisian crochet, I haven't tried it much, but I do like, um, I do like the variety that you can, you can achieve with Tunisian crochet and then mix with regular crochet. It just seems like a lot of fun. My son was born on Halloween, so I started making costumes for his birthday every year. Oh, that's so cute! That is so cute. We, we didn't really celebrate Halloween when I was growing- Oh, there's someone at the door. Sorry, I really have to- I'll be right back. Sorry, I was expecting a package. <laughs> so I just quickly had to run. Yeah, we didn't really celebrate Halloween growing up. But we did have carnival. Uh, God, I'm out of breath from running up the stairs. <laughs> uh, carnival. 
Yeah. I don't I don't know which other carnivals to compare it to. But uh, we celebrated in the southern part of the Netherlands and kind of in the adjoining parts of like Belgium and Germany, I think they celebrated as well. Um, and we just dress up as whatever. Um, but uh, it is also associated with heavy drinking and, and I don't know, I don't really like the music. <laughs> It comes with a very specific kind of music and yeah um, yeah so that kind of when I when I got older it just stopped being fun for me because all of my friends were getting into drinking and I didn't want to so yeah but I, I love dressing up so who knows I might participate more in Halloween now that I'm in the UK um, uh, Ariadne says, been sewing more lately. I want to make more clothes for me and my kids. Uh, next is to make a summer set. Oh, a matching pants and top for myself and some summer outfits for the kids. I hope I have time to do it. Oh, that sounds really, really nice. Um, I haven't got out my sewing machine since I got here. Well, you know, just a little bit. Um, but I would really like to make more clothes as well. Um, and I want to make some seat cushions this year. Um, hi, Barbara, how you doing? Uh, Barbara says I got suckered in <laughs> being on cast with the Renaissance Fair. Oh, uh, I'm sewed all of my garb from, uh, from corset to outer gown. Wow. Wow, that sounds amazing. That sounds amazing. Isn't there a Ren Fair soon in the Netherlands? I think it was in April. Not sure. Um, yeah, I always love seeing those. I think, I think I'm bound to uh, participate one day simply because I love dressing up so much. So, so why not? Why not try it there? Or maybe Comic-Con, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, would you mind shifting your work camera to a few more of your hands? Oh, okay, sorry. Thanks for letting me know. I do tend to not really check the camera when I'm actually working on it. There. This should be better. Oh, I thought I had to sneeze. Okay. Oh, and hello. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Barbara. Miranda. Just a quick hello and bye. Tuesday's an office day. I'll be watching the stream tonight. Have a great day, everyone. Oh, thank you, Miranda, for popping in and good luck with your work. And see you next time. Oops. Oh, I'm, um, by the way, I'm almost finished. Well, that's a lie. <laughs> I'm working on a tutorial video for another blanket. Um, if you're wondering about this blanket, the tutorial and pattern is all finished. 
um, and can be found, the pattern can be found on Ravelry. The tutorial series is exclusive to my Patreon. Um, and um, if you subscribe at a higher tier at my Patreon, you get the pattern for free as well. Um, but I'm uh, currently working on a very simple baby blanket tutorial. It's a baby blanket that I recently made. Um, you might have seen it with the garter stripes in uh, white, yellow, and blue. I haven't shown it on my Instagram yet because, um, you know, I was I was gonna gift it and I wanted to keep it a secret for the new parents to be. Um, and I know they they see my Instagram photos. Uh, so I'll be posting about it on Instagram soon. But yeah, it's just such such a nice, easy blanket. Um, and once you get through the first couple of rows, you don't even need to look at the pattern. It's it's just a perfect TV knitting project. Unlike this one. <laughs> this blanket, yeah. This blanket is not for the faint of heart, this uh, color work one. <laughs> yeah. I've been saying it and I'll say it again. I think I'll actually have to issue a warning about this pattern. <laughs> because it takes a lot of time and it's not easy. <laughs> um. But yeah, it does look really, really pretty. Barbara says, I need to re-sign up for your Patreon group. I lost my job and had to cut expenses. Will I be able to go back for this? I just purchased the pattern. Oh, but, you know, don't don't feel like... Yeah, I, I totally uh, get it if you need to cut down on expenses. And um, you, I don't know if... Um, because I started a, I did a free trial. I don't know if that's available now for you. Um, but feel free to just, you know, join for a month and then see. Um, um, but yeah, so the the pattern, the pattern is on the Ravelry, and uh, the videos are available now from just all patron tiers and if you then I have three patron tiers and at the lowest one you can get the tutorial for this and also um, uh, I see Mel has asked I want to do more color work but not ready for that blanket yet yeah I totally get it <laughs> uh, at that lower tier you also have um, access to the um, color work confidence masterclass which is basically it look it sounds it sounds very high up, but it's actually great for beginners. The color of confidence, um, and then the knit and pearl masterclass, um, which is color work flat, and that just starts with very tiny squares and very cute. Um, I have them here. under my plant this one so I have it upside down so very very cute tiny squares um, just to get you into the techniques of back and forth color work so those um, 
yeah, all of those videos are all up at the lowest uh, patron tier, which is kind of like five euros a month. Might be closer to six or seven dollars. Um, and, you know, you can get the Color Work Confidence Masterclass, the Knit and Pearl Masterclass, and then the Color Work Sampler Blanket uh, class. It's all on there. And then if you want, if you want more, the second tier gives you all of that and then including uh, the PDFs for the patterns for free um, and and some some specific pattern walkthroughs. So for example, I have a um, like a shawl design, the scent of the pine, and I just have that complete pattern walkthrough. Um, so yeah, and I'm gonna be, I'm gonna do more of that, and the first tier is gonna be more just basic tutorials, um, but you'll still have access to all of the videos that are on there right now, uh, and then the second one is gonna be more. Okay, here's the pattern and the video. Let's go through this together, and then the third tier, which is the highest tier, is more like a designer point of view. Um, tier so I'll give you some extra behind the scenes information but you'll get all of the previous uh, rewards as well um, Chris says I think I'm going to knit four different patterns and maximum of eight colors perhaps with one main color without color work between the squares oh that is so nice oh that is so nice uh, did, did you see the pattern last week um, I mean uh, the book because there was a blanket in here with also some um, some just like one solid color panels and I think that would be really nice to just mix it up and to have a bit more a bit more ease in this blanket um, they are so cute aren't they um, your lessons are fantastic Carmen oh thank you so much Oh, the book is called 100 Knitted Tiles. Um, and it's put together by Sarah Callard. Callard. Um, and I have some patterns in here as well. See? Carmen, yes, Amy. <laughs> um, let's see if I can find one. Oh, this is one of mine. The Gingham and yeah it's just really nice and these these squares in the book here have the same dimensions as my blanket squares so you'll be able to swap them out as well um and basically um there are a lot of designers collaborating for this book and basically uh pretty much all of the patterns this is another one of mine uh, basically all the patterns are knit to the same size so you can mix and match and uh, yeah assemble your so this one is different yeah <laughs> uh, but basically you can mix and match and assemble your own blanket um, here's another one of mine yeah and it's all using the same yarn so that's that's why it's just really easy to um, to mix and match. It's all using Scapey's Metropolis. Um, of course, you can use a different yarn uh, as long as you're using the same yarn for all of the squares. It will be fine. Oh, you ordered it? Yeah, it really, it really, really is a great book. Um, so you'll definitely have fun with that. Um, I learned to knit for their cozy woven shawl. Yes, I remember. And you said such lovely things about me on the Scapies page. Uh, I really, really appreciated that. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right, let's get this blanket back in my lap. So I don't have so much lying on the table. Yeah.
usually Momo comes up to take a look at what I'm doing. But she was very comfy on the couch downstairs, so I don't think she'll come up today. <laughs> Oh, and is that next week? The 26th. Yes, that is next week. So the 26th and the 27th, I'm going to Edinburgh because there's a yarn festival there, the Woolly Good, the Woolly Good Gathering. And I don't, I don't really need to buy anything but I just love yarn festivals. I love the vibe. I love getting to know more vendors. Um, and I really like Edinburgh. So, <laughs> so I'm going to go there on the Friday, stay overnight, and then visit the festival on the Saturday. And I'm hoping to get some footage while I'm there because it's the very first um, what, it, what is the word for issue when you're talking about events like it's the very first issue <laughs> um, it's the first time they're hosting this event it was a Kickstarter campaign and it was a very successful campaign, so now the uh, the festival is happening, and oh, the things that I've I've seen from it, it just oh, it makes me want to buy everything. I might I might buy a project bag or something like that. That would be nice. But yeah, um, last year I did a theme. Uh, it was the year of using what I have. So, and I'm trying to not suddenly buy everything that I can get my hands on, you know. <laughs> we live in a smaller house now than we did last year. And there are chances that our next house is, you know, I don't know. I don't know. We, um, we're living in a rented space right now. We're just uh, on the lookout for any properties. But it might be that we settle for a smaller house in a good location, you know? So I, ju I don't just want to buy <laughs> things because they're pretty and they give me dopamine, even though they're pretty and they give me dopamine. But yeah. I feel like books are always an exception. I can always make room for books. Um, and I can learn a lot from them. And, you know, if I'm finished with a pattern book or if I finished reading a fiction book, I, I can always pass it on. And I might allow myself to buy one skein of yarn. But I definitely don't need <laughs> any yarn. <laughs> um, I recently purchased some more machine knitting yarn. And I thought, you know, fair enough, because machine knitting is a craft in and of itself. And regular balls of yarn just don't work as well you need the yarn you know ideally to run really smoothly off a cone 
um, because it just makes it much smoother for the machine. Uh, Ariadne says, I'm trying to work with a crafts budget. It does help sometimes. <laughs> oh, I get what you mean. Uh, I mean, earlier I was, I was explaining, I was um, introducing you to my first painted miniature, the little ghost, ghosty guy. You won't believe like how, how much more expensive this hobby is than knitting or crochet. I was flabbergasted. I mean, my partner has always been into expensive hobbies. You know, he liked to play guitar and then he wanted to buy a really expensive guitar. Okay, fine. Uh, and then he got into riding a motorbike, which is even more expensive. And then bird watching, which can be a very budget friendly hobby, you know, just watch birds. <laughs> but he had to go and get the most expensive binoculars and and then a telescope because he wanted to zoom in more. So he's always about these expensive hobbies. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna let you guess. And this is excluding the paint cost, okay? How much does this one little figurine cost to buy in the store? And it's not assembled, right? So the, this is called a scythe. This is one piece. The uh, cloth is three pieces. And then the skull is one piece and then the base. So it all comes flat, kind of like 3D printed. How much for this one? Okay. <laughs> okay, 15 to 50 might be a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Including paint, yes. Um. <laughs> um. Mine started flying airplanes. That ex that is expensive. Yeah, thirty euros. Okay, okay. I I might be overselling this. I might be overselling this. So it was uh, twelve pounds to buy the little figurine, just you know, gray, unpainted, three D printed, twelve GBP. What's that in dollars? Twelve GBP. Ugh. Two. Let's check used dollars. Fourteen ninety four. So Barbara, you were spot on with your fifteen pounds, uh, fifteen dollars, and a euro. That is fourteen euro. But then the paint. I used one, two, three, four, five. Well doesn't really matter on which paints I use because we, we bought a whole set of 16 colors and I wouldn't have bought them separately. So the set was 30 pounds and then we had four separate paint jars which were three pounds each. So that's 42 pounds for the paint. And then we did the brushes. The paint, I know, yeah, yeah. We we can use them for a lot of miniatures. But yeah, so it was 12 pounds to buy this one little, this guy. And um, so I thought, okay, well, kind of, I'm almost finished with it now. I would like to paint another one. And, um, and then I did, I did look at cheaper ones. There's one set which has four ghosts and it's also 12 pounds. And then there's one set with three ghosts, but they're a little bit creepier. <laughs> and they were 19 pounds, but I got them for a really good price. I got them together for 20 pounds. 
uh, on this website and they had a discount but it was like I've I've already I've like okay if I'm not counting the paint I've already spent about 40 pounds on just just a little taster of this hobby and I'm thinking wow 40 pounds I could buy if I was a beginner with knitting or crochet there are so many yarns that I could buy for 40 pounds so like what's that 50 dollars there's so many yarns that you can buy for that um, yeah almost 50 dollars 49.81 Yeah. Yeah, but you have the pain yarn. And now it's pennies. Yes. But <laughs> but my partner is like, oh yeah, I kind of need I kind of need a more bluish blue for this one. So you you won't believe the amounts of blues they have and the amounts of greens. And then oh I think I can get away with just a couple colors, but my partner still has a whole army of when he was 15 years younger, and he kind of wants to color match the exact ones. Yeah, I've I've been yeah. Oh, but then it's acrylic paint, and if you mix it on a palette. You know it dries really easily whereas if you take it from the pot it's yeah he, he yeah I want to get him to learn <laughs> I'm gonna show him how I do it <laughs> uh, Ariadne says dreams about shopping yarn for $40 yes see and and oh yeah knitting is where it's at and crochet that this this hobby is just like yeah, and now I've got one, okay, and then with the others, I'll have eight miniatures in total, but to play a game, to actually play a game, I need ten. So I need two more, I'm not even finished, I can't even play a game. <laughs> uh. Uh, Ariadne says, well, I used to be into the Asian dolls hobby. Oh, okay. Uh, years ago, that wasn't exactly a cheap hobby. Am I, am I getting a phone call? Stop calling me. He should know. It was Tim. He should know I'm live streaming. Um might be worth looking at the library to see if they have a public use 3d printer there are public use 3d printers and print your own figure yeah my cousin has a 3d printer and he just got into dungeons and dragons so he's he's printing his own like scenery like uh, the floorboards and the walls so I might <laughs> I might have to ask him hey <laughs> Can you print me this? Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, in, in my partner's stash, like from 2004, uh, there were a lot of unpainted models as well. And a lot of models that he's not satisfied with. So we're gonna, we're gonna take the paint off nail polish works really good for getting acrylic paint off acetone free ones uh so and he's gonna let me practice on those so yeah <laughs> um learn to mix oils or liquids too yes yes that doesn't dry as fast and it's so cheap for the paint if they learn to use toothpicks for the amount of yeah well the 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 paint brushes are like close to toothpicks yeah my library has a maker's room with 3D printer, Glowforge, long arm quilting machine. That is amazing. I've just registered at the library last Sunday. Oh, what did I do? Uh, but um, 
but they just had books, you know, and audiobooks. That's the main reason I joined for the audiobooks. Because my Dutch app won't let me uh, listen to a lot of books anymore since I've changed country. You know, I'm still subscribed to the Dutch app, but I'm not in the Netherlands. Uh, and a lot of books, they only have the license for the Netherlands. So, yeah, it's a whole thing. But um, through the library, I can get a lot of uh, audiobooks for free. So, yeah, that's great. Libraries are awesome. But uh, I didn't know that some libraries had sewing machines. <laughs> well, that really is great. I mean, I do have, they do have a tool library here. Um, I go there for my woodworking tools and like yard work stuff lawnmower it's great because we're in a temporary place we don't want to get a lot of tools I doubt that they have a 3d printer but I'll check and otherwise I'll ask my cousin <laughs> yeah but I've just been looking at all my craft supplies with a different set of eyes just like I've seen people use little strands of green yarn for moss it looks great um, yeah. and there's lots of uh, nail stuff that you can use too like the nail file and Maybe that's it. <laughs> and, and the nail polish remover. Um. Oh, they teach anything on crochet in your library. In the US, they're starting to realize that the crafting arts are being, oh, the heart is in the way, are being lost and trying to get them back. Oh, it's a great initiative. There are some craft groups here in Inverness as well. But yeah, I'll have to check around for the 3D printer. Uh, take green yarn, cut into tiny pieces, and mix with school glue to make your mask. That's, um, and they they use uh, sawdust and paint as well to make. Oh, did it just? Hello. Oh, it's back. Yeah. And for mud. Um. They also use glue and paint and then, well, some sand and some, I don't know, like plaster fill or something, like, a, or a wood fill. Um, so I'm gonna, I mean, I have to go down to the hardware store anyway for my woodworking tools, but yeah. Yeah, I just think there's a lot of things that you can make yourself. But um, yeah, these companies are making tons of money on fake mud, fake sand, and uh, fake grass and trees. And I mean, the trees I do get. And I, I have some air dry clay. I think I might be able to make some small 
scenery things from that as well. The doorbell is ringing again. Oh. <laughs> I'll be back. Okay, it's yarn this time, so they were allowed. <laughs> Yarny deliveries are allowed, interruptions. I'll just get my ad address off here first. But it's so cute. I actually want to show you the sticker. Look, woolly knit. <laughs> okay. You want to see my machine knit yarn? to the other camera for now. I knit my first sweater on the machine last month and my mom is coming over next month and she mentioned she really wants to um, to knit her own sweater on the machine too but uh, all of the yarns I already had they're not really my mom's colors um, my mom has a different sense of well just different uh, colors suit her than, than on me. Eh, big box. So then I figured, okay, I'll order some more yarn. Um, Barbara says, I've been tempted to consider machine knitting, but I'll need to deal with all of the other stuff I have first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, machine knitting is like, it really is like a sewing machine versus hand sewing because it is kind of the same thing but you need a whole different set of skills to to operate the machine it is it is not the same um and i would say on the knitting machine casting on casting off increasing decreasing that is so so much more difficult um than with hand knitting but like regular just stockinette knitting it's a breeze okay oh and then i ordered some yarns for a friend as well um, she ordered these really pretty um Turn on the other camera again. This 
this kind of uh, dark mustardy green brown. It's really pretty. Um, yeah, nice golden brown. And, and she ordered this one as well, which is in the same shade, but then on a cone. 200 grams. It's a wool and nylon blend. 90% wool, 10% nylon, and it's it's their blend for socks. Um, I've never knit socks with a 10% nylon, but there is a really high twist in this, so it feels really sturdy. Yeah. Um, Robert says, I've watched a few videos from a woman that I think thinks like I do, which is what tempted me. Oh, for the knitting machine. There there are some really great uh, creators out there. Uh, one is Love Your Knitting Machine. And uh, she just has this sweater tutorial on her channel and loads more. Um, and it's great. It's really, really great. Oh yeah. Um, and then these I ordered for my mom. She wanted to go for either a bright orange, bright red, or like purple. Um, and I think these are really pretty. So these yarns are quite thin. So I need to use them double-stranded, so that's why I have two cones. And yeah, each cone is 500 grams. Yeah, and this is the color Bayas. <laughs> that sounds like I'm saying bears in a really strange accent. Bayas. <laughs> um, so yeah. Um, really pretty color. It's uh, their colors are uh, quite like heathered. They're quite mixed, which looks really nice. I see some very vibrant pinks in here, but also very dark purples, and that is just really nice. Um, yeah, it's like a plum color. Yeah. And yeah, and. It also, it looks thin because it's not yet washed. After washing, this just fluffs up so much. I have a swatch. And this was, it's knit double stranded. And the yarn on the cone is is much thinner than well you can't really see the difference on this one um i don't know if you can tell now it doesn't really doesn't really show up but um when you're when your uh, piece of knitting is straight off the knitting machine it looks almost translucent and then when you wash it it just fluffs up those for my mom and then I already had one cone of this but I wanted to um, to make a garment with that as well so I ordered another one um, yeah 100% merino and this is their Inca gold very loosely plied in some places but yeah very nice and I'm knitting a blanket with this one which is a merino DK and a simple just plain white it's super soft um, and I think I'm gonna have a cone left over from the blanket um, and then I thought I better get another cone 
just so I can actually do something with that leftover yarn. Very, very nice. Uh, and then my friend ordered this one as well. She's really into the more like earthy colors. Um, this is 100% pure new wool. I don't know if that's their British wool. Yeah, it's their British wool. Um, this is called Moorland. Yeah, 500 grams on these cones, which is a lot. Um, so yeah. So yeah. <laughs> Never too much yarn. <laughs> yeah, I was just gonna say, so about that yarn festival next week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I can knit so many sweaters now. And I really need to knit more um, woolly sweaters because we don't have a dryer and wool dries so much quicker than cotton. I've, I've come to despise <laughs> my cotton clothes, uh, my cotton sweaters because they just take so long to dry and then they get smelly, you know, just that old water smell. And you know, we have the heated drying rack, which is not even a thing in the Netherlands. A heated drying rack, so it has thicker pipes um, and it heats up. You, you, it has a plug for electricity. Um, but even that doesn't, doesn't really help with drying a lot of uh, cotton content garments. So yeah. I'm sure like synthetic fibers dry very easily, but I, I don't want to get more synthetic fibers in my closet. Like they have their place, but I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to convert everything <laughs> to synthetic. Um, so yeah, and when I wash my wool sweaters, they're dry within a day. So we actually need all of this yarn. It's it's just a necessity. Um, yeah. Is it humid there? Well, you wouldn't say, but it, it really is. Um, but it's in, in colder temperatures, you don't really notice it, but uh, yeah, stuff doesn't dry as quickly here. And I can hang my stuff outside. I've been able to do that twice. <laughs> um, but every day you'll have this flash of rain and you don't want your washing to be outside for the five minutes that it rains. Because it does really, it does tend to rain every day, but just like for 10 minutes and then, you know, if you didn't look out the window, you would miss it. Um, as soon as the weather allows it to dry your cotton and out, yeah, outside, yeah. Yeah, so, so last week I was able to, to dry some clothes outside because it was going to stay dry for most of that day. Uh, but if you're not home all the time, it's a gamble. Um, our humidity is under 20% here. Oh, okay. I think, I think when I last looked, no, it can't be. It must be misremembering it. I think it was like 90%, but I must have misremembered it. Um, average humidity in Inverness. 
in April, Inverness gets on an average 77% humidity. Yeah, that's quite humid. Um, for your nails, do you get a manicure with nail polish or do you use nail strips? Yeah, they are stickers. <laughs> I always love saying this. Um, I'm, I'm always going to remove them because I got some paint on it here and they are, you know, they're growing out. Um, but yeah, I got these for Easter. I thought these were really cute. Uh, but yeah, they are, I think, I think they call them nail wraps. Um, and it's really easy. Uh, it's really easy to put them on. And they last a lot longer than nail polish for me, which is great if I'm doing like a tutorial series. Because in the past, I had to change my nail polish halfway through the tutorial series and then you know you lose that bit of consistency it doesn't matter that much obviously but I do like it if I don't have to worry about my nails If it's windy, our towels are usually dry within an hour. Oh, that, that's great. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, I hope once we move that we have a bigger garden. Because here, our garden is kind of, kind of small. And there's a lot of um, tall fences around it. So, so it... It doesn't catch a lot of wind and if it does it's like those winds that come from come from the top and they like blow everything off the rails um, I used to sell color street nail strips but they change formula so the new ones don't last as long oh okay um, oh bye Natasha see you on Thursday Um, oh, now I wonder if nail strips are the same thing. Nail strips. I don't know, I think so. But they have different ones. So they have... I have the regular ones. And you can also have a gel nail strip. Um, and these last, you know, an okay amount, but, you know, I don't do the dishes, uh, with my hands. I, uh, we have a dishwasher, um, you know, when I'm, um, I make sure that if I'm shampooing my hair that I'm not using my nails to kind of, I mean, you shouldn't use your nails on your on your um, head anyway but you know I just make sure that whenever I come in contact with water uh, like if I actually take a bath that I don't soak um, my hands in the water as well and I don't go swimming so I guess in in the summer these will be less effective but but they are pretty good and I can generally do at least two. Um, I can use each set twice at least. And the ones I had were like nine euro. So it's pretty much the same in dollars. And that, that's pretty good for two manicures. Um, Yeah, but I have to I have to see if there's a uh, a similar UK website as well because I used to get mine from a Dutch website called Rep My Nails. Uh, 
and I could still um, order from them and you know have my parents bring it over because they are visiting next month but yeah I'll, I'll, I'll see what's around here um, Oh no need to send no need to send me some Barbara. <laughs> That's super nice. <laughs> There's no need. Um That's so sweet. Um Yeah, I just think it's so fun to try out. And like I massively reduced the um, the like cotton pads that I need because for nail polish you use them a lot to get the nail polish off and with this one with these I just soak and then pull them off and then you know I might need one cotton pad to clean it up but yeah so <laughs> I mean I won't pretend that that it's better for the environment, but I don't know. I do feel like nail stickers might be better than nail polish. if this is going right um, you shouldn't be pulling them off they could take a layer of sheer nail off with them yeah yeah I do tend to soak them and I do tend to like leave them on for like two weeks so I feel like then at that point they almost come off by themselves. But yeah, I know I shouldn't. Yeah. Um, my daughter used a, used a nail wrap, which sounds similar. Yeah, I, these are called nail wraps as well, but I know that there are different ones, um, which is basically like a full sheet and I, I don't know how it works. <laughs> I've never tried those. Uh, but I know that I almost bought those by mistake, thinking it was the same. Um, but yeah, these are called wraps as well. Um. Yeah, and I've, um, I bought some for my mom as well, and I used to do her nails a lot, and now, now that I've moved away, she's learned to do it herself, but, um, I'll, I, I'll bet she'll take a sticker sheet with her next month, so I can do her nails while she's here. <laughs> um, and... Yeah. I've also taken the nail wraps on just, you know, girls' nights and I did them for my friends and it's just really fun. Um, if you're doing the nail polish remover in a bag with warm water and just rub on your nails, it dissolves them and no the damage to your nails. Oh, I'll try that. I'll try that when I take these off. And also, I was looking for a way to 
um, to make it easier to cut them to the right shape because I always have to cut my uh, cuticle shape and I was thinking like you know maybe I'll just grab a sheet of baking paper and you know out outline it on there so that I have the sheet of baking paper and I can use that to make it easier next time I, I cut the nail wraps to the correct size but you know you might have some you might have some other tips for that My sisters-in-law used to have the uh, dipping powder nail manicure set and it really damaged their nails. Um, you know the set where you, I don't know, you put some polish on your nail first and then you dip it in this jar of powder. And it just becomes like super solid so it's you think oh, okay this is super nice I can do I can even do heavy stuff while having this nail polish on and after taking it off it just damaged their nails so much yeah it, it almost seemed like acrylic nails, yeah. Um, but it was like some powder that is just directly onto your own nail. Um, yeah, but it looked really pretty. <laughs> they had a lot of glitter colors and a lot of like colors that would change in the sunlight. It was, it was really fun. Um, get a small cuticle cutter. There. Oh no, but I mean the, um, uh, I mean to cut the, the sticker. Um, because the stickers are always like too square for my, to, to fit my cuticles. You know what I mean? So, um, so I just need to have some model of, you know, <laughs> the actual shape of my nails. I still have some plaid ones. I think I might <laughs> I might go for them next. But I also have a pineapple one, which is really cute for summer. Or like spring. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Hmm. I don't know if I'm good enough to to pull that off. <laughs> but uh I'll see because um uh, whenever I've you know cut the sticker too big and I, I tried that and it just yeah. But it might have something to do with my tools. Um Oh, thank you, Mel. Thank you for hanging out with us. Have a great day.
yeah time is flying um i'll be here until 2 p.m that is about 10 more minutes um i'll make a video and send to you in facebook okay <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I thought, I thought I might have been able to reach this corner in the live stream, but looks like, well, I might, I might go on a little bit off camera. Just to get a little bit more done. Sorry, Barbara, I'm not sure if that was to me or to Mel. <laughs> but in case you're going, have a wonderful day. Thank you for being here. I'll be back on Thursday, but it'll be a little bit earlier in the day. Um, and next week on Tuesday, it's the same time. So on Tuesday, it's a bit more um, US time friendly. <laughs> A bit. <laughs> I know it's still very early. Um, Hi, Tim. <laughs> Did you forget I was doing a live stream? I had to... 
I had to, how do you say this? Refuse your call. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> well, I'm almost done, so then you can call me. <laughs> Your book is here, <laughs> by the way. Oh, it's difficult to see. All right, I'll be calling it a day for now because I'm sitting like a shrimp <laughs> and I need to sit up straight. Um, <laughs> okay, well, thank you all so much for being here with me today. Almost made it to the corner. Maybe I'll do that before the next live stream or maybe I'll do that during the next live stream and we'll find out. Momo is downstairs. <laughs> oh, this is too weird, Tim. <laughs> yeah, she's sleeping. <laughs> See, they all know. <laughs> um, yeah, but thank you all so much. It was it was a lot of fun uh, and I'll be back on Thursday. Um, 10 a.m. So that's 10 a.m. UK time, 11 a.m. Central European time. Um, yeah, we do. Yeah, we need that to be actual furniture instead of boxes. So that she'll sit there. Yeah. <laughs> Usually she is on my chair, but today she isn't. Yeah, but who knows? Who knows? Maybe she'll be here on uh, on Thursday. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> um, I got more yarn just now, so I'll be admiring my my new yarn, and maybe getting out of my knitting machine. But I need to finish a video first. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yes, <yeah, sh> <laughs> okay, no, 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 it's all for a friend, it's all for Sophie, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, for a friend and for um, my mom, yeah, none for me, yeah, just, just two cones for me.
<laughs> okay, okay, I need to go. <laughs> all right, but thank you all so much. <laughs> I'm gonna flee from Tim. Okay, all right, bye.